Formal Productions presenting My Sinking Ship. Stuck at sea, Allison passes the time by spitting stories about ridiculous situations she's been a part of. Beer fairies, scuba diving with Santa, and more. Promises, promises to be the best spoken word on a raft ever. My Sinking Ship. Day one. What the hell? Where's the yacht I was tied to last night? <laughs> Day two. Dear future, past, and present cabin mates, I appreciate your need to hump like bunnies. Well, not so much that I appreciate it as that I understand it. What I don't understand is your need to do it in my bed, forcing me to sleep in a raft which a bunch of drunk assholes put out to sea in the middle of the night. <laughs> Day three. Lessons I've learned while scuba diving. Number one, Norwegians are crazy. <laughs> Santa Claus can also drive a boat like a crazy mofo. <laughs> Day four, a poem about missing things on land. I drank my first Guinness in the woods behind my house, sharing it with the girl who a year ago had been our valedictorian and voted most likely to succeed. I had been most, voted most likely to be everything else. <laughs> she told me I was her best friend. I nodded and thought to myself, she was just a girl my guy friends thought was hot. New to drinking, I looked to the guy sitting next to me and told him I thought he was a dick in high school. Joel spit a beer full of beer, or a mouthful of beer into the fire. The guy got up and peed his lamentions onto a tree and then came back and hugged me. Once a summer, we all met on the last night before we went to college. The fire pit belonged to the Methodist Church, and each year I called the pastor to make sure it was okay, and he said it was as long as we promised not to drink, and I always felt guilty as we snuck cases of beer into the woods. Joel said it was okay, though, because we were Catholic. <laughs> we all toasted to that. Three years later, my parents moved, and I'm standing in the hot girl's wedding this summer. The dick calls me to go out to secret breakfast before work once in a while. And once, I return to the woods in the middle of the night, and everything in the old cul-de-sac remained exactly the same as my neighbors just circled the years away. Kids were now teenagers sneaking out of their windows, and I remember when they used to stick their guinea pigs in the mailbox and that the only good parking spot was the one in front of a fire hydrant. And the whole neighborhood had grown enough to make me feel too big to fit in it anymore. Wondering, was I the only person that could to escape it? Why did I want to go back so much? Day five. Sharks, start talking to me. 